I woke up just for this and you'll find you'll know very soon that I don't wake up for just anything uh, so we're gonna go plant coral today with the alligator head foundation Hi! Yay! so they are getting together the cement to uh, plant the coral in so it's a very specialized technique if I massage him not true yeah. Kelly yeah. soften him up Make that cake. Yeah, mustard, yeah. It's like yeah, it's like dumpling. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce the folks at the Alligator Head Foundation who are doing the planting today. We've got the head boss in charge, that is our main coral gardener, that's Denise Henry. Uh, we got Tweety. Tweety, you driving a boat today? Yeah, All right, yeah. he's in the green shirt, but usually Tweety is on the dive with us. Right, That's Calric and Seven. Dwight.
So we're done clean up. Yeah. Carrick. Yeah. About how much do you think we planted? Maybe about well, five or six pieces. At per... least. Yeah, at least. Yeah, normally so we like oh. five, six pieces yeah. per cluster. Yeah. Successful day. In a quick, in a, see, in a quick time too. Them, them things just get a little salty, they never get no blood pudding. Yeah. That's so, why I go. Next time. Next time. Put them up for safekeeping. A little bit easier to cut through. We are in her wet lab right now at the Alligator Head Foundation and she is micro fragmenting coral because it makes them grow faster. So in Jamaica, we have a lot of nurseries that are growing the faster growing corals, like the Elkhorn and the new Stadhorn, right? And the conditions work for that because they can outcompete the algae. As long as they're cleaned moderately often, they can outcompete. But your slow growing corals can't outcompete. We've tried them in open water nursery settings and it just doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is a wet lab with optimal conditions. We can control light, temperature, nutrients, everything to create the best conditions to grow your slower growing coral. Mm -hmm. And to help them grow, we do the process that's called microfragmenting, which is cutting corals into small pieces so that they go faster. And each of these small pieces, or maybe a clump of three or four, will then grow together and make a whole colony that we can outplant in a year, a couple months to a year, depending on the species. Very cool. The idea is corals grow faster when they've been distressed mm. and they've been broken. It's just something that someone figured out by accident by breaking a piece of coral he had in a wet lab in Sarasota. And he forgot about it and went back a few weeks and realized that the little piece had grown more than all the rest of his corals. They put more energy into healing. See that? Yeah. So this is a diamond blade bandsaw. It's actually just a little bit of diamond crushed there. Oh, okay. hey. Because coral is, depending on the species, really dense limestone. Really, yeah. really dense limestone. Where you can actually see how porous it is. It's a little bit easier to cut through. Ah, okay, right on. Okay. So that is an elkhorn coral that she's uh, cutting off. So that's what you're cutting up today, right? Oh. I did some already. I'm gonna do star coral. Star coral next. Um, it's called, ah, that's there he is. Yeah. So the proper seen... name is Sidorastro, but it's... I'm gonna forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Common name is star coral. Star coral. And, and try not to cut off your finger in the process. Yeah. Let's not do that. They are very unhappy about this. Okay, so so you see all the mucus coming off of it. That's that's coral snot. Yeah. We're doing something really cool today. We are out planting mangroves with Dwight and Denise. I'm excited. I've never planted mangroves before. So Denise is growing mangroves. This is just behind the Alligator Head Foundation. This is her little mangrove garden plot. We're here at Brian's Bay. It's loud, it's windy, and it's, there's a lot of cars, so hopefully you can hear me. But Denise is trying out a new spot for planting mangroves, and it's at the mouth of this little river. So we're gonna go check out some of the outplants she did a year ago, actually two years ago, and they're, they're doing really well. Uh, some better than others, because she said some were planted closer to the water, and those are the ones doing well. So let's go check out what the guys are doing. So these are the outplants from two years ago. You said 2018? 2018. About? So like this is a great sign. Prop roots. Okay. So prop roots only come out 
when you have change in tidal levels. So that shows you that the water here, which is at the rivers, you know, at the bank, will get higher and lower. So this is better anchorage. Mm -hmm. so what will happen there? It will create more stability for the river bank. Right. Ah. Uh, okay. And then eventually, with time, you'll have a, it'll be a nursery. Yeah. Fish will start living in between. The yeah, it becomes stuff. a nice habitat for them, places to hide. So these mangroves will help to reduce sedimentation it will slow down the flow of the river which is heading right out to sea right here mm -hmm. it will take up nutrients so whatever nutrients is coming with this as it grows as the, the mangrove bed gets bigger you have more absorption of nutrients so whatever is coming down in the river whatever nitrates phosphates mangroves will use them up and look at them they're really yeah, lush they're, looking they're thriving um, brilliant and with the loss of mangroves, I mean, you're losing, obviously, habitat, nursery, but it also helps to uh, protect the coastline. So yeah. there's and so many things that mangroves do. And one of the more important things, especially now in climate change time, is carbon sequestration. Right. Mangroves are the yeah. second largest marine sequester of carbon. Right. So Pop down. Calric is here. It's Navy Island over there. Check out this crab. I'm immediately hungry. <laughs> We're on the other side of this little river and this one is a red mangrove. There's what, three types? There's red, white, and black, black. mangroves. And the red ones are more obvious, obviously because of the, the prop roots are red and the soil around it or the dirt around it is usually red because of a tannin. Look how well it's doing. Bigger than me. And look at the prop roots. So this one is definitely excelling. It's doing super well. There's a couple more on that side. And that one's just starting its prop roots. We got spiders here, which I'm going to try not to run into. Hi, you look scary. Look at that little prop root starting, so he's heading down. Yeah. To be as tan toddy as them two. Yeah. Watch out, I brought in a tick. I just said. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. And there's another one. Yeah, boy. Coming in handy again. <laughs> Jungle. Just like that, like planting any other tree, really. Now you're in your forever home. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna come get to plant this. white mangroves and we're planting them up here why so they don't need as much water okay. white mangroves are generally found further away from the coastline okay. so they can handle drier areas yeah. and um, they send out what's really cool they send out these things called um, walking roots not walking roots pneumatophores which the roots can be half a mile away from the tree what and it sends these finger light projections up so even if it is inundated, inundated with water, yeah. 
the finger light projections are able to still get air. Okay, that's I'll show you that's them some advanced the planning office. there. Yeah. So white and black mangroves have pneumatic doors. Okay. And they get huge, right? They get so big. they get really, get really big. Oh, I can't wait to see these guys in like six months. And we're through. We planted approximately 80 mangroves today in this little section. So we'll come back in a couple months and see how they're doing. Actually, they're going to check on them monthly, but I'll come back in a couple months and see how they're doing. Give you a little update. Thank you.